Hello, this is Nikki in Niagara coming to you from Niagara Falls, Canada and welcome to Throwback Thursday. This is my semi-regular weekly. <laughs> I'm okay, I started it a couple of weeks ago and I skipped last week. I was moving my craft room over to a different room so I couldn't do any filming. But I promise that I do intend to do this regularly from now on, on Thursdays, Throwback Thursday. I will try to film ahead, so just in case something happens, I will have one to give you. Um, so what we're going to do is take a look at an old art book on my shelf, and we're going to do a flip through and see why I have kept it this long. And I'll tell you... Uh, whether like why I've kept the book and stuff. And the one I chose this time was is called Collage Lost and Found Creating Unique Projects with Vintage Ephemera by Giuseppina or Josie Chin Ch Chirin Chirincioni. Uh sorry if I well, I know I mispronounced that, but an Italian name, Giuseppina Cirincioni. That's my best shot at it. Now, I picked this one because I didn't even remember it. I was looking through the books on my shelves and going, trying to decide which one to do. And I came across this and I went, what is that? And um, so I had a quick little flip, flip through through it. And it brought back a little bit of memory. I did really enjoy this book when I bought it and um, looking through the pictures it's a uh, really nice vintage and this was kind of like at the beginning of when mixed media artists on the internet were starting to use real vintage ephemera in their artwork um, instead of reproductions of it or you know whatever and I guess we've kind of gone back that way too since you can buy ephemera uh, very easily these days. That's not the original. So this is about working with the original pieces and it also includes a lot of techniques that are uh, involve more than just your paint and water and brush and glue. It involves metals and encaustics and, and all that kind of stuff. And um, some of well, well, we'll have to wait until we go through it, but I didn't do a lot of those, though I was fascinated with them. Okay, so here we go. The front gives us a total idea of what we're going to find inside. Collage Lost and Found by Giuseppina Josie Cirincioni. And this is by North Light Books. Most of my art books seem to be by that publisher. And this one, I bought this new, and it is from... 2006. So here we go. We have like a vintage photo. We have a uh, lottery card and some playing cards. Table of contents tells us that uh, our, our, there's three main sections. First we have uh, collage, catechism, greeting cards, tags, and business cards. Second section is formal viewing, books, shrines, and wall art. And the last section is fashion fortissimo, home accessories, jewelry, and gifts. And basically we have um, ATCs up here and here. Here we have a framed piece, and here we have a piece in a journal. Oh, and there's one of those... Uh, one of those uh, flat see-through glass things that you collage on the back of. Okay, so here we have a brief article on describing ephemera, what it is, and some pictures of some art. So I like the style of art in here. If I remember correctly, it's not the stuff with wings and hats on it that was really popular back then. Um, I had a subscription to Somerset. I, I go off and on of having a subscription with Somerset, but the first time I stopped my subscription was because I was sick to death of seeing hats and wings on everything. So I waited till that fad was way over to go back for my second shot. Okay, so now here it tells you where to fi find 
found objects. So photos, found objects, and miscellaneous. So that's what this article is about, and it shows you a variety of things. We have a, looks like a cigar band, a postcard, some muffin things, a key, um, hardware, old stamp, photograph, tray, sheet music, do do do. Brass number plates are over here in this corner. I know you can't quite see the whole book, but I, this is the best in frame I can get. Okay, then it tells us what supplies we're going to need. Not to do collage with ephemera, but to do the projects in this book, what you'll need. There's a complete supplies list, which starts off very easily with paper, paint, ink pads, adhesives, and ends up with strange or more complicated things like wire, solder, and something called flux. Next is a list of standard tools that you should have in your art place. Um, and I don't consider a lot of these necessary items. If you did have these, you'd be able to do pretty much anything, but it's her opinion. And same on here. Okay, so here's our first section where we're going to be looking at greeting cards, tags, and business cards. And here we can see a tag. This is a greeting card, and here is a business card. So, first thing she does is shows us how to collage, what goes where. She talks about composition and um, how to lay stuff down on the page so that it is attractive to the eye. Of course, that's all relative, but if you've never done collage before, this right here is a step-by-step, -step, photo by photo uh, example of her making this envelope here, de decorating this envelope and telling where she's putting objects and why. And that goes on for this page here. Now we have a gallery of some of her artwork where she's altered things. Continuing. These were my favorite pages in this book was just to look at the galleries. Okay, now uh, we're going to talk about surfaces. What surface to work on? And here she shows the bingo cards. Uh, this is a folded needle uh, paper and we have a photograph. Those can all be your substrata. And we have a gallery. Then she talks about using rubber stamps in your work. So this is all very basic stuff uh, that uh, if you've done even just a little bit of mixed media art collage whatever you want to call it, you'll know this stuff. But if you're a beginner, this is fantastic stuff, and it's a pretty book to look at. So anyways, tells you how to incorporate rubber stamps into your work. And she shows making that card. And the gallery, again, some rubber stamping. Really like this. I remember doing a piece where I put people into a car and I really liked it. I collaged them though. I wonder where that is. Yeah, I have all my all my big pieces of art in a in a binder. I should get them out and show you sometime. Okay, now she talks about embossing powder and I am embarrassed to say that I have never ever embossed neither with embossing powder or using an embossing plate. I do have a big shot, so I don't have any excuse for not doing that, but there's just something about it that I like the look of it when I see it, but there's just something that makes me not want to do it. But I really, 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 really do want to try using embossing powder this this year. I have a whole little drawer full of supplies for it, so I'm ready to do it. <laughs> 
Okay, so she takes you through the steps and shows you some work. Okay, now here she shows you how to use this metal tape to create a faux sheet metal. And we have some projects with that tape on it. And that's really cool. I like that. I like this one. I like... I like seeing the vintage pictures with men or boys in them because girls and ladies are so popular. Uh, now doing things on a small scale. So here we have some her working on a tag. Uh, now we're talking about a tape transfer. This is... I hardly ever do transfers now, but I was real big on them at one time, and this is the uh, method that I used the most. You could only do small things, but um, I transferred going from packing tape to the clear contact paper, and you can use big images with that. So it's a cheap and relatively easy way. You just have to have the time to scrub the paper off the back of it. It's worth the effort, though, I think. Though I really have no desire to do it at this moment. So we have a gallery of uh, tags with um, packing tape transfers on them. Okay, and so now here she talks about making your very own handmade collaged business cards. And a gallery. Then we move into the second section of this book, which is books, shrines, and wall art. So we're assembling wall pieces, and we're using 3D pieces rather than uh, a flat substrata. Okay, so now here she talks about she calls it creating an old book from scratch. And this is basically what we do when we're putting together our journals today. She tells you how to do that. She's making a small sized one here. This is the, the finished project of so anybody who does the, the fancy frou-frou junk journaling will know all about this. And if you don't, it shows you how to make it. Uh, it looks like she's is she doing embossing there? No, she's just going over this crinkles in the paper. So yeah, this, this is a long tutorial showing you how to put that book together. Uh, and she's using a pamphlet stitch. Okay, and now she shows you how to use that metallic tape to create a cover of a book. I'll try to get that one nicely on screen because um, bookmaking is one of my big loves. So I want to make sure you see that. See, she's, it looks like she's used wire to go through her holes here. And I, be, I believe this kind of binding is called the Japanese stab binding. Oh, no, that's when you go over the edge. It's a combination between the pamphlet and the Japanese stab. And here she's used um, a slides, or slide, uh, yeah, slides without any slide in it. And she's put it on the cover of the book. Okay, now she talks about altering vintage books. And this is not the way that everybody's doing it today. This is where you keep the book, the original book, and you alter it without completely covering it or disassembling it. So here she's doing pieces of work on the covers of the book. You see how the old the old book is the substrata that she's working on here? And now shrines. Oh, shrines were such a big deal. We went through this uh, in the middle in the mid 2000s there was this big thing about making shr shrines and basically that was taking any kind of shadow box or a box because you tip a box up on its end and you've got a shadow box so right here i believe this is a cigar box and 
you make your picture on the bottom so that you can stand it up and put it on a shelf and we called them shrines back then. So made a few of those. Uh, I don't have any on hand. I think I gave them all away in swaps and stuff. So here's a big box. It's an attractive piece of art. Okay, now she talks about using gel medium as your adhesive. Pretty basic stuff there. Okay, then she talks about adhering with beeswax, which is called encaustic. And um, I have never done this either, and it is something that I want to try. I have got a small quilting iron, and that's what I plan to use with it. And I also want to try doing this with um, not just not just wax, but I want to do it with crayons. And so now we have a gallery. Okay, so now we're getting into jewelry and home accessories and gifts. And here we have a, this is where the soldering comes in, in this book. That was a huge phase that uh, the mixed media world went through as well. Everything was soldered. And uh, I never did that because I just was, to me that just seemed too hardware-ish, if you know what I mean. I didn't want to be using hot metal. Today, I think it would be interesting to try, but I have no huge desire to do it. I like it. So here she shows you how to make a pendant using paper glaze. Now she talks about doing collage in a small space, and this is on the bottom of tiny tins. And uh, this evolved into the Inchi Revolution. <laughs> Unexpected surfaces. Uh, paperweight. Don't know what that is. Yeah. Oh, I guess these are just paperweights. Okay, now she's got uh, doing these, uh, uh, she says doing it with epoxy. Oh, E6000 epoxy adhesive is what you're going to use. So using a strong adhesive, but she shows you how to make these little glass, uh, flat glass marbles. Alright, now we come to soldering. And here we make, she shows you how to make a charm out of marbles using soldering and jewelry uh, findings. So there's a whole big step-by-step -step process on soldering. So now you can solder. These are pendants that are made from glass slides. These were a huge thing too at one time. And there's a gallery of them. Okay, now she teaches you about working with jewelry findings. And this is a section that would be good for me to read because I would really like to do um, jewelry with the found objects that I collect. But I am absolutely terrible at, um, well, I can't even close a jump ring properly. So I've watched videos on YouTube and it looks so easy. I have the proper tools, uh, but can I get a jump ring to close? No. I think I have my fingers are too short and stubby. We'll go with that. So she's showing you how to put a necklace together using jewelry findings. And here's a couple of examples. These are with the flat backed glass marbles but you could just use real marbles and solder around them. Okay, so here's some pendants with the uh, little um, glass ones here and the glass slides, gallery of jewelry. Okay, 
combining soldered pieces with leather. Whoa. So here we have this thing right here, which I don't know if it's a, oh, it's a, it's a wrist thing, bracelet, but a leather one. So she shows you how to make that, how to work with leather. And then she talks about collaging onto sheet metal. Now, does she mean that? No, well, she means real galvanized sheet metal. So, using a lot of the techniques that she's shown in here. Here we have the, um, uh, I want to say epoxy, but it's not. It's uh, that glass. You put it over paper and then it hardens and it's see-through and, you know, you know what I mean. The soldering, the jewelry findings, sheet metal. And then she says, here are some images for you to use. She says, feel free to have fun with these images on these pages. So if you are finished with the book and want to cut it up, you can go ahead and do that but more likely you want to scan these in and use them. So they are copyright free. A few pages of it. And then we have a list of resources and stuff which are more than likely out of date. And an index. I really appreciate it when a nonfiction book especially this type has an index because they are often missing in modern day books. So let's take a look at what is on the back here. They are advertising metal craft discovery workshop, art stamping workshop, collage discovery workshop beyond the unexpected. I have that one. And this one is visual chronicles. I don't have that one, but I would like it because it's a look through other people's art journals. And I absolutely love those kinds of books. So, there we go. That is the book. And now you can tell, I would guess 99% that this book is out of print but uh, is probably very readily available through third-party sellers on Amazon. So go look it up if you're interested in it. It's, this is a great book for beginners. It teaches you the very basics, how to glue, how to compose a collage, and takes you right through some really fancy, nifty uh, techniques. It, that's who I would say this book is best suited for. I'm keeping it because it's nice eye candy. Looking through it just kind of, you know, gets my mind rolling and thinking about things. So thank you for joining me on this Throwback Thursday. And the book, once again, is called Collage Lost and Found, Creating Unique Projects with Vintage Ephemera by Giuseppina Josie Cir Cirincioni. I will put a link to the book down below. Hey, thank you for joining me. Bye-bye.